from here. <laughs> Thank you. So some of the things we did were um, we started with a lot of self-discovery. So of course, we, we talked individually, my coach and I, about the questions. And I shared with her what I thought after I stopped crying for a while. Um, but then we started digging deep to understand what are my strengths? What is the way, how, how do I communicate? How do I manage conflict? How do, how, how do I handle leadership differently than others? And these are some examples of the different assessments that we did. And a lot of them are very, like, very cost effective. So, for example, the Strength Finder 2.0, which I absolutely love. And I know, like, with Jessica, she may be able to talk to us about it because with the foundation and Adrian, they do a lot of work with that. It's mainly helping us understand our top strengths. So, you, complete, you get the book, you complete a, a, an assessment at the back. So, you, they give you a code, you go online, you complete that assessment, and it's giving you your top five strengths. And this way you can read them and you can get their perspective from the assessment of how, what, what are you good at? Many times we don't think about what we're good at until we start looking for a job. And that's when we're like, oh my goodness, what is my top three strengths? What are my weaknesses? And we're just trying to be so reactive to figure out how we're going to answer the questions of that um, uh, to prepare for the interview. But we, we don't have to do, wait until the interview, start thinking about it now. The DISC model, and you can do it online, the DISC is mainly helping you to get better understanding of your style, of how you're interacting with others. Are you direct? Are you more of a person that, that um, like influence, you care about influence? Are you a person that don't like change? So all of this is great. And also Emergenetics, which I absolutely love. So Google them, like take a screenshot of this, Google them and go online and start taking a lot of these assessments. The more you are aware of the information that you are getting and how you're being described, the better. And what my recommendation is, if you've done some of these assessments in the past, go back to the report, read it and highlight in one color the areas that you think apply to you and in another color areas that they don't apply to you anymore. Because we're evolving. Our our brand continues to evolve with us as well. Your goals and aspirations and skills where you were 20 years ago is different than where you are right now. So it's good to keep going back and reflecting on these things. So that's the first thing we did with my coach is mainly, well, actually the first thing is try to answer the questions she gave me. The second thing was to do as many personality assessments and to be intentional as I'm reading the report. So it's not just scanning through it, like really thinking and looking at it. And some of, some of the information you may not agree with, and that's okay, highlight it in a different context. Color. The other thing that, that we did, which I believe was so powerful, is we did something called 360. So 360, some of you may be doing it at work where you're getting input from your manager, your coworkers, all of this, but it's more in, in a work setting. This one is more about your brand. So if you go online and you search by 360 reach, or you can put branding 360 reach, this is mainly a, a survey that you can send out to people. This is your coworkers, your past coworkers, current or past managers, your mentors, your friends, your family members. You send it to them and it's asking them questions about what do they believe you're, you're good at? What do they believe are areas that you need to develop? Um, and they even do some fun stuff and they say, if you are a car, what kind of like, let's say, if Narisha is a car, what kind of car would she be? Would she be? What do you think? What car would Narisha be? Come on, ladies, don't don't multitask. Focus with me. I'm um, thinking of the Ford F one fifty that she probably drives to her job site. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's actually good. Okay, what else? Uh. Uh, SUV multitask. <laughs> okay, good. So let's say if uh, Jessica is a car, what kind of car would Jessica be? Tesla. <laughs> oh, yes. 
I think so. Yeah. So one of my coaching clients, she's so funny. We did this assessment for her and a lot of the responses that she got back about what kind of car she is, she was more like Honda. She's reliable. Uh, she's a Toyota. She's like somebody I can depend on. And she's like, I don't want to be a Honda. I don't want to be a Honda. She was so upset. And she's like, I want to be a BMW. I don't want to be a Honda. But it's hilarious how they're associating our brand to something that we already are link. We, we have a sense of that specific brand. So that's why I love this assessment. It's, it's really a, 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 a survey that is going out to your friends. It's just going to take a few minutes for them to complete, but it's so powerful when you get the responses back. And some of the responses may be things you don't, want to hear that's okay just be have an open mind and absorb it because if they're spending the time to share with you how they feel and what they think about you that's something that we need to respect and then um so dima i have a question yeah. earlier before you even put up the um different type of personality assessments which i've done them all and i love 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 emerging genetics the question i was going to ask and it's it's kind of resurfaced is if a person couldn't do these do you suggest that they talk to other people and ask people what they think? Because you might get something that you like don't want to hear. And I just, I don't know how risky that is. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely. You know, anytime we get input about from people that we trust and we know that they care about us, that's always good. So for example, uh, one of my good friends that she's also my mentor, I absolutely adore her. Whenever I sent her the 360 survey, um, even though it is anonymous and you're not supposed to know who said what, but you can get a feel of who said what, who said what sentence. And she even told me later the section that she completed. I, I, was, I was uncomfortable with what she shared because she was really trying to challenge me to be even more than who I am. And uh, I, was, I was not comfortable with that. And it's, it was a lesson for me that I need to respect what people share because again, they're spending time to, whether it is in person talking to me or uh, through this 360 to share with me what they think. So back to you, Narisha. Yes, asking people what uh, input about you and areas you can grow because there are things that you may not even see about yourself or think about yourself that other people perceive. Um, and that is very powerful. Like when I did the 360, and that was uh, 11 years ago, I, uh, some of, a lot of the messages I was getting is she's, she motivated us to be at our best leadership. She, she, she's a great mentor. And I never saw myself in that aspect. I was seeing myself more as the leader of a department managing teams. And that was the first time that it gave me the seed to think like, wow, people see me as a mentor, as a coach, as a, as a person developing them. And that's where it started the whole thing. And look what I'm doing right now. So yes, but you know, there are people that are toxic too, that you need to be careful not to go and ask for their input. Never, not everybody is going to care about you and your development. And that's why you need to be so selective of who you're getting input from, who are you getting advice from in general? And we, we have the choice to do that. So I want to see if that helped Narisha. Okay, good. So we need to be on brand in everything that we do. And here are certain things that we need to be thinking about. Knowledge. So when we're thinking about our brand, here are certain, certain items for, for you to think. Knowledge, which is your skills, your expertise, and your leadership skills. So think about as when people are perceiving you and they're thinking about your knowledge and expertise, what are you doing to continue to develop yourself? And one of the things we talked about in our last session a few days ago was that this is it's so essential for us right now to continue to develop our skills. We cannot allow the idea that we're working from home and we're so isolated to stop us from advancing as women in business. So knowledge, think about what is your knowledge and what do you need to do to continue to develop this knowledge? 
The other one is presence. So how, what are you dressed, your posture? I see a lot of women in meetings and sometimes including me, I'm so focused, but I'm closing myself up. I may be sitting with my hands crossed, my legs crossed. This doesn't help with the posture. And uh, even though I may be comfortable sitting with everything crossed, but it's coming across as being closed, as being not confident. And these are things that we all need to be aware of and do something about. Um, our body language, that is so important. Like how, how is your body language? Are you, are you projecting confidence or are you not projecting confidence? And that's some, like, that's a whole different session. We should, we should have talking about body language, um, online presence. And that's what we're going to cover later because it's not a matter of just our physical right now. We're all digital and we're all are reading each other. And we have a whole sense about the different brands that for for all of us. And communication, the voice projection. I'm going to be honest, like when I am doing training, when I'm doing coaching, I just realized that a lot of women that I interact with, their voices are so low and maybe they're not intentionally speaking low. Maybe they're, they think that it is, maybe their voice is naturally not high. Maybe they think it is more polite to be, to have a lower voice, but it doesn't come across as too positive. It doesn't come across as confident. So if you are, if, if you are in a meeting, just start observing, are you speaking up or do people need to lean in to be able to hear you? Are they asking you constantly? Can you say that again? That just means that you need to, you need to start raising your voice a little and that's okay. And maybe not a little, you raise it to demonstrate your confidence and your speaking without, without trying to put yourself down. Um, and then, of course, in writing your vocabulary, vocabulary, your sentence structure, messaging. As you see, our brand is everything. How we're acting, how we're speaking, how we're projecting ourselves. And that's something we need to be so aware of. So all of this is you. So I'm going to pause and see what you think so far before I keep going on. Tell, tell us if you have questions, if you, if you want to add to this, if you disagree with anything, go ahead. Well, it was interesting that you, you, you talked about body language. So sometimes like I, I know that I do, I do things that I, I don't realize I'm like my, like I'm holding my, like my, my shoulders are crossed. Like I'm, I'm, I, I don't realize that I'm giving out the projection that I'm closed, like I'm closed off, like um, I'm not, that, or that I, that I'm, that, that I'm, like you said, I'm not confident. Yes. So that's why you need to be aware of that. And then we need to do something about it, right? And yeah. that's the first step is to become more aware. That's what the assessments and the 360 and asking people's input, they're helping us see ourselves from a different lens. So we see it and sometimes we, we agree with that. Sometimes you may not agree and it just depends on the situation. And then you adjust, you adjust who you are in order to continue to grow and continue to evolve as a person. Thank you. So great brands, they don't become great brands by accident. Think of the ones you like, like Tesla and all of the ones that you may like. They, they're not just waking up one day and they become amazing. There's a lot of investment. There's a lot of self-discovery. There's a lot of change. And the same thing with us as well. We need to think about how we can continue to evolve as a brand. So now let's talk about our online brand, because that is so important right now with everything that we're living in. We don't want to be invisible uh, just because we are working from home. And I realize a lot of organizations, they're going to have their team continue to work from home for a while, even after the state opens up, or it's going to be a mix. So, uh, so that's why we need to be very careful of our, our online brand. So let me ask you, if somebody, somebody Googles your name, so if I go now and I Google your name uh, or I go to LinkedIn and I search by your name, what information comes up that would convey your brand? Tell me. Um. Do you even Google your name? Oh yeah, I Google my name. Um, I have a lot of suit jackets on. <laughs> I have a news um, alert set on my name and there are a lot of other Jessica O'Connors. I have learned that. Yeah, that becomes yeah. tough. Yeah, my, my married name really um, 
took me out of the uncommon loop. Jessica Johnson is probably one of the most common out there. <laughs> My maiden name is Weimer, and I know there are at least seven other Jessica Weimers, and I know like where they get pizza from because I get their email receipts all the time on accident. So it's maybe it's just late '80s babies. There's just a lot of Jessicas out there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But do you realize how their brand is also linked to yours and you need mm -hmm. to be careful? And that's where we need to think about some other things, maybe your middle initial, maybe some, some additional things you add to your name to make it specific to you instead of, because if they go do something crazy and I Google your name, I'm going to think you did something crazy. I'm telling point, you. I do still use my full. Yeah. O'Connor a lot. Yeah, I, I try to use it too. It's it's a mouthful, but Jessica Gwen Johnson, I try to do the same <laughs> because Jessica Johnson is just way <laughs> too slow. It rhymes beautifully though, Jessica Johnson. It sounds like it flows. Somebody so said it sounds like, what's the, the show? Jessica Jones. <laughs> like, uh, I can be a superhero. That works. <laughs> That's funny. Like when I used to hire, when I w worked for IBM, I would, I, before I even look at people's resume, I would go online and I Google their name. And if I find anything crazy, I would not even move forward. Um, and it's like, even now when I am working with hiring an attorney, hiring, uh, not like for, for full time, but like if I want to work with an attorney to review something, work with amazing uh, graphic designers to work on something, I'm going to go and Google their background because I want to make sure that they are aligned with their, their brand and their identity is aligned with who I am as well. So make sure you Google your name once in a while. Jessica mentioned, I wonder if it's the same thing, Jessica, which is the Google alert. You can go and do a Google alert with your name. And anytime any information is online about your name, you're going to get an email notifying you of that. And that is so important because you don't want to have anything crazy out there that you're not aware of. Um, Googling my name and your name is so important because you need to see what's out there about you. You will be surprised how much information is about us online. So regardless about our brand and your, our professionalism, your address may be online, your, your phone number may be online, your age is going to be online. And that's why we need to be aware of this information and go do something about it. We can reach out to these companies that are selling really our information and ask them to take the information out. In my situation, because of security related to, because of my background, I'm always checking to make sure my address is not online. And some of these companies, they even demand that I would pay them money so they would take my information out. And I'm okay. Uh, of course, I'm not happy to pay the money, but in a way, it, at least I have more control of what is the information about me online. So Google, if, if you are on social media and a friend of yours tagging you on a picture that you don't like, uh, and it's not just that you don't look good, but maybe you're a little buzzed with a lot of alcohol and uh, you, you may not want this information to be online and anything that is being posted about us, it's going to be easily shared. So, so just recognize that you have the, the choice of what information is out there and you need to take action. One, one woman one time told me she feels uncomfortable to untag herself from any, any uh, post that she doesn't want people to see because she thinks that that would be rude. If you think the same way, be rude. Be rude. It's okay. But what matters is that you don't have information out there that you don't want people to see. So Stephanie, I am not able to use the video on my end at this moment, but wanted to add that I work in professional development at LSU in the College of Business. And this is exactly what I tell my students all the time. When I go to the classroom, I actually make them Google themselves to make sure that they're happy with what, they, what comes up. Thank you, Stephanie. Absolutely. And that's something we all need to do. LinkedIn. So let's talk about LinkedIn. And the first thing uh, what we need to talk about is what are you using LinkedIn for? Uh, networking. Okay. Online mm -hmm. networking. Okay. I'm probably uh, not using it the way I should be. But I, I, I find a lot of resources there, but I don't have much of a presence. Okay. So I read a lot of articles and things like that, or look up folks, other folks, but I don't pay attention as much as I probably should be to mm -hmm. what I'm using it for. Okay. 
So I used to use it a lot in the past, but um, my industry doesn't use it. Well, be different and keep using it. Yeah, and, and so my profile is on there. I'm just saying electricians and plumbers yeah. are not right. They're not going to be <laughs> they're not they're not, they're not looking people up on LinkedIn. People are, are asking like for word of mouth and reputation and what they know from like working from somebody yeah. and that can't be garnered from LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. That being said, like for um, an organization I'm a part of and we're hiring someone, I have looked up the candidates to get a better idea of like their resumes. But LinkedIn is not so I, I don't have to use it for my daily work. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's not applicable to your industry. And there are some situations where it's like that. Yeah. I okay. use it for networking, but I also use it for um, brand reputation too, and applying for jobs and how I appear on online. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, there's so many ways we, we need to use LinkedIn. And uh, especially now, because when we're thinking about our digital brand, the first thing that comes up is really Google and LinkedIn. So we need to ensure that we're active there. So th these are some interesting statistics. So here, uh, 575 million people are on LinkedIn globally. So it's huge. It's so much bigger than I ever thought. Um, and so it's a place for us to find people and to be found, especially now for individuals that are going to be looking for jobs. Make sure you update your LinkedIn profile and make sure you have the right um, keywords. So if a recruiter is looking for, for someone like you, at least the keywords would have them see your profile. So they started in May 2003. 60% of people that check their LinkedIn is from their mobile device. It's to, in 210 countries and over 2 million groups. So think about the groups. Think, of, think about the things you're interested in. Maybe you're interested in topics related to women empowerment. Maybe you're interested in topics related to leadership. So go join these groups be active in these groups because not only you're going to learn, you're going to be able to connect with a lot of people that have similar interests. And when we're talking about networking at this time, it's tough. We're not, no, none of us is going to events, but if we can connect with people that have similar interests from all over the world, that would be amazing. So tips and hints, your picture, make sure your picture is good picture, that it's not old. Um, and it is that you're looking straight at us. Don't put a picture where you're just like looking at the sky because there's something about look, having eye contact, whether it is in person or whether it is digitally where there's some, some kind of trust that's automatically built when people can look at you in the eye. So here are some, some examples. So if you, the Mona Lisa, apparently she has a LinkedIn profile and she has the most beautiful smile, the most famous smile. So let's look at this. What do you think about this? Th these are actual LinkedIn profiles. What do you think about this one? Maybe, oh, she's, uh, a, if maybe she's a craft brewer. Yeah. Uh, that makes all kind of, of, yeah. The, um, presentation. I think I'm on gallery. How do I? The. Oh, go up to the top and maybe speaker. I don't know how to. Speaker. See the. Someone gallery view right now. So if you if you can, someone can uh, chat and send you instructions, and this way we can keep moving forward. Okay? Can someone help her with the chat? Thank you. Mm -hmm. So with this with this picture, uh, initial the first instinct is that there's wow, like she's drinking on LinkedIn. That is not appropriate. But you're right, and um, and it is she is she works for a brewing company. So for that in that situation, it's aligned with her brand. That's totally okay. What about this person? Would you hire her? Would you trust her? The thing is, is that, so I would dig. And so in a pre, so my previous job is actually that I worked at LSU in the College of Business. And so when we are trying to promote students or share them with organizations, we want somebody who presents a business look. So it depends on what it is that the organization is looking for. So mm -hmm. for that particular organization, no. But for another organization like a 225 magazine that might be looking for a social light who's going to run, she might be the perfect woman for them. 
Yes. So in this situation, she describes herself as a motivated and driven individual. I thrive off the ability to succeed and achieve targets. So you see, it is like the picture that the, it's not it's not aligned with the brand image that she's trying to give. Um, for for men that love hunting, that's not the place for LinkedIn. Go keep these pictures on Facebook and look how far away he is, where we can't actually see his page fa face. If you love a picture of your wedding day, that's not on LinkedIn, that's Instagram and Facebook, even though it is adorable. Like this picture is so cute with a dog, but that's not LinkedIn. Uh, kids, don't put your kids on LinkedIn, put them on other platforms. There's so many other places. Again, the kid is adorable, but that's not the place for the, for the little boy. And don't post scary pictures of yourself. So make sure <laughs> your picture look approachable and for a person to, to feel comfortable reaching out to you. Look at us in the eye. So here in this situation, it's a good picture. He was happy with that networking, but I need a picture where you're looking, in, looking at us. Make sure it's clear, no logos. We wanna see you, even businesses. Don't put logos, people wanna see you. And then, you, he has beautiful background, but at the same time, we need him to look at us in the eye. You see how there's something missing when someone is not looking us, at us in the eye. This guy is very, uh, he's, he's funny because apparently he's a recruitment manager too. Wow. And this one, he's a CEO, chief president, owner, boss, and that's how he wrote president. So, so I know some people try to be funny with these things. I just, I'm more traditional. So especially with LinkedIn, let's keep any barriers that stop people, others from seeing our true brand and our true identity. So that's the first one, the picture. The second one is headline. So this is mainly the characters that you're using to describe yourself. And this is so hard. That's the one that people struggle with the most. So here are some things you can include. You say, I am, so for example, I am, in my situation, I'm a, an executive coach and a leadership speaker. I have worked in Fortune 20 companies all around the world. I have experience in developing executives and uh, helping individuals to advance in leadership. My top strengths are coaching, uh, blah, blah, blah. So think about this. So follow this format because it really captures all the elements that we need to have in our summary. Who you are, where have you worked, which is your experience, what is your expertise? They need to know that. And what are your strengths? So this way you can have a very short paragraph that really has all of the main messages that you want people to know as you are, um, as they first look at your profile. I've seen a lot of LinkedIn profiles that has a lot of um, a lot of content, people copy and paste their resume and put it on their LinkedIn profile, but that becomes too much. Nobody's going to read it. Do you think anyone is going to go and read it? Nobody's going to even read their resume. They're just going to look through it. So make sure you're giving them the main messages you want them to leave with. What are, if they're going to look at your LinkedIn profile for like, let's say 10 seconds, what are the main things you want them to see? And that's why the summary section is so important. Be uh, concise. So as I see here, people spend three to seven seconds on your LinkedIn page. So make sure you're giving them what they need to see. And I, I see here a question from Liz. Would the LinkedIn summary work well in a cover letter? Absolutely, yes. Because again, a lot of individuals are not reading them. So when you're giving them, when you're feeding them, the main messages you want them to know in a very simple, direct way, that's, that's when it's gonna be very effective. Um, make sure you have your experience. A lot of people, I see them, they just put the title and they're not putting content on, underneath it. So I'm not saying go copy your resume, but make sure under your experience, you're putting a little information that describes what you actually did. So maybe two, three bullets, very, very simple. Skills and endorsements. So if you go to a lot of LinkedIn profiles, you're gonna see so much, so much information about skills for people to endorse. The problem is a lot of them are related to things they did in the past. When we're thinking about our brand and where we are heading, we're thinking about the future. So if you are planning to become an executive of a company, you don't put part of your skills that you're good in Excel and PowerPoint. If you were in the past assuming uh, an intern for um, 
doing research and now you are high level person, you don't put research as part of your skills because research was part of your past. You would want people to see your skills as what you are, where you are right now and where you are heading. And what I see with this one too is many people, they have like 10 or 20 or more skills for others to endorse. You don't need that. Just put the top ones, maybe the five to seven main ones that align with who you are right now. So I want to challenge you to go to your LinkedIn profile and see what's out there and uh, delete. Even if people endorsed you on it already, delete the ones that don't apply to who you are and start uh, asking your coworkers, your friends, your uh, people you work with to go and endorse you for the ones that you really want others to, to see and, and to align your brand with when they go to your profile. I was going to ask that, Dima, because I have people who I've never even worked with that have endorsed me for things. And I'm like, what is this? So I, I, I didn't know you could delete them. I'll go and do that. Yes, go, um, if, if it doesn't apply to you, go ahead and delete it. Maybe you've done it in the past. Like for example, in the past, I was a bank teller. Do you think I want to put my skill as a bank teller right now? Unless if I want to go back to banking, that's wonderful. And it's great to be a bank teller. I loved being there, but it is not aligned with who I am. Now it's about coaching, people development, team building, all of these things that who I am now and where I'm heading. So Go back to your skills and see what you have. This hey, is Dima, it. Yeah. We'll add to that about um, using your junior league resources for things like that. So like as you're going through your, your placement, if you come across somebody that either experiences your, um, your skill set that is applicable to the work that you do on a daily basis, or you come across somebody that is in your industry or your field of work, seek their approval or request for them to endorse you directly. That's one of the great places. Junior League is a great place to kind of support one another as women in, in the business industry. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So this, thank you, Teresa. Um, so the skills and endorsement, this is actual screenshot from somebody on LinkedIn. And the reason I know is uh, she works for a company that I do consulting for. I talk to her multiple times and she always talks about her desire to get into leadership and she wants to manage teams and she wants to grow and be promoted. But look at the skills she has on LinkedIn. She has Microsoft Office, Microsoft Excel and research. Does this give you the brand? Is it aligned with what I just told you? No. And this is what I see a lot of. I see a lot of people putting things that are part of who they were. We need to think about the future. So now tips, picture, we talked about all of this. We, uh, the skills and endorsement, the final one is recommendations. So it's so important not just to ask for recommendations, but to give recommendations to others. So look at your profile. If you didn't give recommendations, make sure to, to start thinking about it, individuals that you would want to recommend. And especially now, because people, a lot of people are looking for jobs, when you are recommending others, that shows generosity. So that shows that you're caring and you're, you're giving. It's giving to uh, something good to others. But also think of the people you worked with, especially now, and see if there's any individuals you would want them to give you recommendation as well. Connections. So that is so important. And connections is tricky because there's two mindsets. There are some people that just accept anybody that comes to their LinkedIn profile. And if they're sending them a calendar, I mean, a connection, they accept it. Um, other people, they're so uh, picky and they only want to accept individuals that are part of their network. Um, it just depends on the personality. Like in my situation, when people send me a connection request and they uh, give me a paragraph and they say, hi, Dima, I, I saw that you're friends with Norisha and I, re I watched some of your talks and I'm so interested to learn about you. I'm okay to, to do that. So it's safe uh, because that person is connected with someone I know. But I've done in the past where I accepted people and they think that LinkedIn is a dating profile. I think they're missing out on the concept. So they're like, oh, you have a beautiful smile. And I'm like, okay, goodbye. So I take them out. So they're, they're, missing, they're missing what, the pro, what uh, LinkedIn is for. So you need to think about what works for you. There's no right or wrong as long as you are also protecting yourself. Because many times, people that join your network, they're able to get your email 
email address. There's ways, like I can go now and I can get all of your email addresses from, from LinkedIn. And you don't want more spam. You don't want more mess, messy things to come your way. So just be picky who you are connecting with. So this one is funny and it says, since you're a person I trust, I want to invite you to join my network. And they, they don't even know each other. The guy is walking by. So isn't that similar to a lot of the, the LinkedIn invites that we get? So that's, the, that's regarding the LinkedIn. So uh, one of the things I want to mention to you, it's so important for us to be visible whether it is physically when we are in the office, but digitally as well. We need to be visible. And we do that by sharing a post. And it doesn't have to be a whole blog. Maybe you're sharing a thought or a comment. Maybe you read an interesting article and you are sharing it with others. I know a lot of people do that, but I also know that a lot of other people are not doing it either. You can also write an article. So you don't, let's say you're an expert, uh, for example, I'm going to say my friend, Jessica. Jessica is amazing in management, leadership, in creativity, uh, design. She's the one who designed my book and designed all kinds of wonderful things. Wouldn't it, don't we want to hear about how Jessica is learning to be better leader from being a creative designer as well? I would want to hear that. So imagine how we can use the skills and the learning that we have, and we can post a short articles. They could be a paragraph or two, but this way we're always communicating our brand and we're not invisible behind just a screen and just accepting the people that are connecting with us. So share and create. 87% of recruiters use LinkedIn to check candidates. And this was before the uh, COVID-19 and all of this. So now it's going to be more and more. We're going to see more recruiters using LinkedIn. So part of my advice to you is share your passion, contribute to online groups. So don't just join a group and just be silent. Contribute, share comments, ask questions. That's so important. Create a digital foot, footprint. And that's when you are sharing uh, posts and, and commenting on other people. Separate personal from professional profiles. So if you have a beautiful picture with a little kid or with your dog, that's on Facebook and, and uh, Instagram. Be on Facebook, I mean on LinkedIn, try to make it as professional as possible. And then remove anything from your social media that's too personal or private. So uh, if anything that you don't want future clients or recruiters or managers to see, make sure you take it out because it can easily just go on Google and everybody will be able to see it. So I wanna see if you have any questions, I'll pause for a second. Um. No? Okay. question is yes. um can you explain a little i feel like i'm fairly well like good at facebook and um instagram and twitter and i manage social media for multiple accounts but linkedin is always a little confusing to me about who sees what um in the the act like the news feed yeah. and what shows up on your profile. Um, I think I've noticed that like, if you like something or you write something, it'll be on your LinkedIn profile, but can you just kind of explain a little bit about um, LinkedIn and like just that activity? Like, do you need to be commenting more? Is liking okay? You know, what is showing up on your, your page? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything you comment on and you, you like, it's different than Facebook. Facebook, like if I like so many things, you most likely will not know. But on LinkedIn, it, it will be part of, it becomes part of your activity. And that's, that's okay. But my recommendation uh, back to uh, part of your question is make sure you're like watching what other people in your field, what are they talking about? What kind of articles are they sharing? Uh, connect with them. So you mentioned, did, do you work at LSU? Yeah, you were, you were talked earlier about you work at a university. So working at LSU, see what, what other contacts you may have at other universities or your peers at LSU. What are certain uh, topics they're talking about? So this way, it's, you're going to stay informed about it, but also like it, share it, comment on it. This way, it's creating activity. So you're not invisible and quiet in the background. 
other people will be able to see you and read your comments and that's going to increase your network. Good. So we have, uh, oh wow, we have one minute. So I wanted to share this real, let me share it real quick because I have a client call in one minute. Um, camera, make sure when you're speaking, you have it at your eye level. You don't want, because right now I have even like books on my, on my uh, thing. So if I have it at the desk, look how low it's going to look. And I'm looking down at you. You don't want that. You want it to be at eye level. You make sure your lighting is good. So I usually have I, I tell everybody to buy this. It's a small light. It's called uh, ring light. So if you go on Amazon, you'll be able to get it. If I took off my light right now, look how dark I look. That's why it's so important to have light in front of us. Make sure your background is clean. Make sure that the sound is clear. All of these things are so important because you don't want any distraction, anything to stop people from seeing or connecting with you. And I know we're overdoing Zoom. There's so many Zoom meetings. So just be selective of which ones you want to be uh, visible and talk, but you can't just put yourself off camera all the time. You're, the people you're talking to, they need to see you. So select what, com what, what meetings you would want that. So it was such a pleasure. I know I have so many uh, other slides that we didn't get to go through, but, um, oops, yeah, let me see here. Yeah, so um, if anyone wants to have information more about branding, just email me and I'll send you some blogs I wrote about this topic. Again, it was such a pleasure spending time with you. I hope you learned something new today.